Welcome back and good morning everybody here, morning call at BD Swiss. On the 11th of February, we've all survived the one thing, the big storm coming over or flowing, flowing, flooding over uh, a northern part of uh, Germany all the way to the south. Has been a, wor a weaker than expected potentially, which is uh, great news, but uh, on the other hand as well, it's like freaking cold, especially for me, I would say the little Asian here at the moment, and uh, weather as said is pretty rough here right now. So temperatures as in the fridge for my Asian friends, or rather freezer, minus one, two degrees last night. Holy smokes, really cold stuff here outside. So looking forward to return back to Asia somehow soon but of course as well first thing importance is well i'll have to go over london the next couple of days when i'm taking the flight back to asia as i to recap have been here for a seminar in berlin for bd swiss where we all talked over the markets talked about entry exit opportunities and of course as well uh, potentially strategies to uh, to have fun in the currency markets stock markets as well as of course uh, precious metals and uh, well, oil and gas and all that combined. Well, very good morning as well here. Yeah, the room is still filling up, I can see, and uh, it's great to hear everyone. Shahab is, of course, well uh, back with us here in either language, some German and, of course, uh, quite a bit of uh, English as well. So, gross domestic product, the GDP out of um, Great Britain is coming up uh, next in our calendar. That's potentially something interesting. We won't cover it live with our uh, webinar sessions here, but uh, I'll be staying put as well to see and observe what's happening, potentially happening in, uh, in the markets. What can we see? That's exactly here, our uh, trading opportunity. Weekly chart looking pretty much short on the pound. Last week had hammered the markets down as well. Remembering as well, we started kind of week on Monday, and this was another week which didn't do what I quite often say is happening. Monday up, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday down, vice versa. If Monday moves lower, then also the remaining trading days go lower. But simply what had happened this week, as I said, it doesn't work all the time like this, else the markets would be far too easy and everyone would be a millionaire here. Uh, and uh, it's already enough if I have one as well. Uh, said potentially at least uh, at some point i'm not there yet as well so market moving a lower uh, market moving lower towards the support area that was last week and right now we are finding potentially the way slightly higher towards a resistance area so the story which happens quite often as well another reason here to potentially sell we talked about it uh, yesterday resistance resistance a broke market came down and finds this exact zone here not to the point but the kind of kind of a look at it as a zone finds this one as a support area which is exactly then what potentially might help us here 129.50 which might help us here being then somehow resistance anytime soon and this resistance area here as soon as well could say or could tell us as well that the market might be uh, getting sold. We see a bit of a, a bit of positive play here right now. That's what I would say as well makes sense. Then this week, Monday slightly bullish, and now, and that's what we should do here, finding some sort of uh, hourly charts. And now, if the market starts falling, and we do that already, we can see that the recent uh, the support area from today at least. Yeah, we would call this the daily pivot area here, the support area from today right now, seemingly broken. If this one could be broken lower, then we might have a few interesting entry levels here, either selling the market here at the lows. That's, of course, always a one opportunity to go into the market when we're getting in at a slightly uh, worse price than, uh, than, uh, than selling it at a higher level, but we get a bit of a confirmation. Of course, keep in mind as well, same story here. We have this weekly pivot as well, market at support, 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 and then boom, the market falls lower, and that shows us some sort of momentum could start here. The same story as well here, either at resistance, that's of course the better entry price, when we see something like this, market drops or market moves higher, initially drops lower, that's a confirmation as well from a candlestick point of view, and of course as well from the point of view of an of a resistance area. So remains to be seen here. We should wait a bit as well. If we're looking at the daily chart, we can see what I mean. Selling at the low point there or waiting for the markets to a dip or waiting for the market to go slightly, to move higher slightly at the beginning. And then of course, to, to drive the market lower 
the later of this law. Sharp gives me a confirmation, which is interesting as well. As traders, of course, we always like to listen to each other's opportunities, entry and exit points, watching the news, looking at what other traders potentially do. But importance as well, that's what Sharp does all the time. I know it in our personal conversations as well. He does his own trades, his own ideas, and likely does not blindly follow what I do. Um, and uh, hence as well some good some good ideas as well from his side to start trading he obviously as well sharp uh, uh, you also obviously as well spot the same level seemingly interesting as well confirmation from the long-term charts i call it the rule of thumb uh, you always want to find uh, like three ideas three possibilities three confirmations for any sort of trading opportunity or any trade we take one could be weekly chart down also and that's the confirmation from exactly that zone I just mentioned. We have a bearish movement last week, the trend line, which is right now where we're at. If that trend line breaks, which could be as well, if we are if we are seeing a, a bearish move to the downside here below that support area, that could mean as well 128.70 or so. That could mean as well that the market drives lower after a, a support level uh, would be broken. As well, on the other hand, we can see some sort of news and that's uh, remarkable and bringing us into the economic calendar. GDP today, if that's going to be worse than expected, that could really drive the market lower and could uh, threaten the pound to, to lose uh, further steam. For our VIP clients as well, I will uh, upload uh, some uh, trading ideas regarding this one from our side here on our VIP trading alert. If you're not a VIP, a, a client at, um, at BD Swiss, I wanted to say a VIP colleague. We have many VIP colleagues, of course, here in, in our crew. I really saw that as well in our during our VIP seminar, where you were not potentially a VIP client, but definitely a VIP guest, and also my VIP colleagues were there, and really had to, we had a, a blast, as I said, amongst the great hospitality from the Redis and Blue Hotel in Berlin. Yet back to the charts, the GDP number, if worse than expected, then of course we could see the market driving lower. Also, and that's uh, what we talked about yesterday already, we have uh, uh, Jerome Powell will talk and um, will speak in front of uh, the, he say, the, the market says here, or the calendar entry says, testifies in front of Congress. Could be interesting regarding coronavirus. Death toll, as we know, has climbed uh, of, uh, of the more than 1,000. Uh, Number there, we have Mark Carney talking in um, at the UK Parliament. So both combined, interestingly enough, uh, Powell will start and Carney will talk later. So not sure, but the, the guys in the UK seemingly work uh, work a bit longer here as well. But uh, we'll see how how uh, how Powell will do. And uh, the coronavirus, US dollar fears of weakening potentially. Mark Carney, not sure if there's any big chances of the uh, Great Britain uh, of of the British. Uh, British Central Bank, Central Bank to strengthen the currency, but uh, we'll see how this goes in general, as I said just now, and uh, what potentially would be the outcome for the pound. I am still the having still the idea the market could drive lower, and uh, looking ahead at the uh, monthly chart, still having the idea that the market finally uh, breaks out at that uh, potentially previously higher breaking higher a market movement point here but what we can see right now is that the market starts falling and, and the us dollar coming back to life moving over to and from the pounds towards the euro let's have a quick look here on the euro pound we are still short in that one that one is in a, on a in a no zone area right now slightly lower not really big ideas and opportunities but what we can see looking ahead weekly chart you might say it's looking slightly bullish we had a quite bullish candle last week agree with this on the daily chart though haha, we see something different we see on the daily chart the market started falling yesterday and that would be something out of the, the blue here i would see that area potentially support 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 broken and now we are starting into the trading day and we are still early in the day especially what uh, the big liquidity is concerned which uh, comes in usually as i I keep mentioning during European and or US trading. Looking ahead at the hourly chart, we see the market closed here, US session slightly. So market sold off uh, during the Europe slash US session yesterday, end of US session profit taking. Market came back slightly to the upside right now. Asian trading slightly higher. So another great, uh, well, opportunity, a great opportunity to potentially go short would be the 8440 area which in this case, of course, uh, would confirm potentially a stronger stand in the pound. And uh, should the market 
fall further. We could see that this one uh, coming also uh, coming uh, coming and uh, happen, ha helping us here with our potential short position where we are still in, of course, here the one which is in a drawdown right now. We make money on the swap, which is good, helping us uh, so we can easily let this position run forever if we want it. Simply just because the pound has a slight higher so it has a slight higher interest rate which is what we can bank based on our 1.5 lots contract here. We bank the swap on the pound and we have to pay the swap on the euro. The euro uh, interest rate is kind of lower, which is of course why uh, uh, every day we leave this running, we make some uh, free money as we had called. Yet if we're looking at the four hour chart, we can find the market has fallen a bit and we could maybe adjust the trend line also to that area. Here. Support, 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 market broke higher and then fell lower that could mean as well that the market might start going against the further and going again further to the upside which uh, of course would confirm the bearish short so interesting day ahead i think uh, just in uh, terms of the euro pound as well of course we know as well we have a big story between the european side uh, michel barnier from the european uh, negotiating part in terms of uh, trade talks trade agreements potentially towards uh, yeah maybe end of uh, this year 2020 and of course Boris Johnson on the other side where it's not going to be about trade only but also the fishing rights right so before uh, and when Great Britain was part of the European Union they were of course able to fish anywhere in the Norman Sea right now it could really change big time and they might really not fish in European waters kind of some fights potentially seen but of course with the with the fishing rights in Europe and with the diminishing amount of fish in the oceans that might uh, still be something uh, something which uh, needs to be uh, needs to be a uh, talk and find some agreements on but uh, definitely a big topic of course among as well the foreigners uh, how many foreigners are allowed to come into Great Britain and uh, Austin and still the uh, the uh, the idea between the European side and the uh, British side uh, as well so that's what the pound is concerned we have something interesting as well stock markets moving higher they still keep creeping up and we can see so far yesterday i was not right with this one here the market really starts a rebound and uh, for the berlin guys here i talked about and we can still see the we can still see here the uh, the little uh, uh, mark up here the arrow to the upside which is what i said as well could happen further market and resistance area dropping lower driving beyond the resistance area coming back finding support that's the well uh, the very important level here 3330 triple three which is a uh, kind of important uh, yesterday we had seen a bullish candle so market initially went lower s p 500 let's look at the uh, hourly chart the market yesterday went slightly lower say sideways during european trading anyways pre-market open very important the s p 500 usually fundamentally being traded only in the US, of course, it's an index in, in the United States, so Wall Street mainly driving the market demand potentially uh, of, this, uh, of this index, and hence as well, the big push started during US trading, market moved higher, came back slightly lower, then boom, even after trading, after hours, the market went up, all well, that combined, of course, uh, might lead to further positive demand. Here, looking at the daily chart as well, we have these kind of, uh, yeah, railroad tracks, bullish candle, pin bar, anything combined, but that's definitely looking bullish. Market moves lower, kind of uh, in a way last week, Friday, and then Monday, yesterday, boom, big push higher. And now we could see the markets take off potentially moving further to the upside. Resistance, next uh, turning point, no clue, rather looking long for now. We could drive a, or mark a resistance area. That's the one we might see. And that, of course, would mean as well that the market. Uh, that the market finds resistance at around the 3,400 level, which of course is in turn as well, would be a very nice resistance area as in a round number. So that's the one we can see going higher. Gold price, interestingly enough, a standing kind of steady, still showing upside potential gains. Also, that's not really changing. 1595 would be a great entry level as well to uh, find the market moving higher this week. We've been slightly sideways, slightly bearish, agree on this one. Hence, waiting might make sense as well. So if you wait and then kind of, if you would like to trade this one, I would encourage you to wait first and then see, we'll look for potential entry areas only above the high. If uh, if you would want to, to trade the market for us, uh, 
we'll wait as well. We'll see um, any potential entries only when the 1595, 1600 level might be broken. Again, monthly chart confirms the uptrend. We had a bullish market move. Uh, we had a bullish market move last month, and this month slightly lower. Risk on is the big topic at the moment, and unfortunately, our Aussie trade had not uh, had not survived the a market move lower. Why is the Aussie so strong? We can see a positive, positive news from uh, China. And of course, uh, it's an interesting story as the Chinese uh, the central bank has, uh, has uh, added some stimulus. And that stimulus, of course, um, helps as well in uh, uh, su um, supplying countries. So this, in this case, uh, lots of uh, iron ore, lots of other stuff you can dig out from the ground in Australia. Being exported to China has an impact, as I said, as well. And that's the move which really makes sense as well. So, Bit of risk on stock markets up. Let's uh, maybe uh, ignore gold a bit, gold sideways, but also slightly bullish, of course. Still, but the Australian dollar is on the way of recovery, and that definitely means here, and uh, we can see that in the chart as well. That means that the market might change uh, uh, direction to the upside. That means the market might uh, really move uh, move higher, and uh, of course, in this case, could uh, could really drive the market further to the upside. So resistance, resistance, resistance. And then now we might see 67.20, 67.30. If the market really goes higher, we might see and adjust our view potentially towards finding the next resistance area as a potential target. If the market stays in the previous week's range here, so last week's weekly candle, I mentioned yesterday, market moves up during last week and down during last week means we had a uh, buying potential at first and then we had sellers stepping in showing guys you want to rise no don't care or oh, pushing the market lower this is utterly bearish this is a bearish of uh, a trading confirmation as long as this week does not trade above the high above this uh, last week's candle if this week does not trade above the 67 80 level we can still see the market falling further that's at, at least my long-term view might just be that we see some profit taking financially or fundamentally some a positive risk assessment stock markets up chinese stimulus aussie dollar uh, aussie uh, um, the australian dollar moving higher so we'll have to see but again as well safer bet for us here if we would sell the market only below the support when the market starts falling we have a higher chance of success and that's exactly what we do. I don't want the, the idea potentially how you like to trade, but uh, definitely here a bit of waiting and a bit of patience here um, is key for my from my part um, at least uh, for now. Big political situation it brings us to the euro dollar currency pair. I'm having a question here who's asking, was Shahab as well? I assume. Yeah, <laughs> Shahab was asking, what do you think about euro dollar? Let's move, move to the to the German political side. Remember a quick recap. During a, um, during a uh, election in Germany, the big coalition, the Große Koalition, we call it in Germany, Germany uh, the, um, between the Christian and the Social Democrats in Germany. This is uh, Mrs. Kramp Karrenbauer, the new uh, potential uh, uh, head of uh, head of it. Is she is the head of the Christian Democratic Party, running potentially for 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 Angela Merkel's term after for the chancellery in Germany. Yesterday, she said that she's stepping down once the Christian Democratic Party has found a new leader. And of course, she'll also not anymore be the, the head of the political party. So uh, kind of uh, on the last on the last uh, three, four last corners before general election in Germany, I think it's about due next year, where uh, Angela Merkel, Mama, as most of them call her, will not uh, will not be uh, will not be. Um, uh, electable anymore. Uh, she's not the one, and we might see, and that's something interesting here. We might see that uh, that the, the the party uh, moves slightly move further towards the right way. The so-called AfD, the Alternative for Germany, as they're called, uh, had been had been uh, in a well, not in a scandal. Technically, in just a, a political uh, situation, had just elected, had just voted for a, for a, for a center, a center free thinking political a guy in Turinia, and now of course being criticized. That guy stepped down. A big story between uh, the uh, Christian Democrats uh, and the. Social Democrats, um, of course, which had gone on, uh, gone on, uh, more, which had moved now towards a bigger situation, and uh, that might be, that might be that the Christian Democrats might move slightly towards the uh, rather uh, uh, right-wing area as well. Right now, still the old uh, 
the old guys who had also were on against Spahn, uh, who might really be the one who runs for the for the for the century then next year, uh, might really come out uh, come out again and uh, be the one who wants to kind of uh, go for the political uh, leadership in the uh, in the uh, in the party. So we have some not really big time, but we have some turmoil in uh, Germany. So interesting that I'm here right now as well talking to people, seeing what they think and how they uh, organize their situations and what's happening also with some friends from either political side, the rather left wing, some of the guys in Germany, especially in Hamburg, are more on the left wing side and some of course of my business partner friend, rather friends rather on the uh, Christian Democratic Party. So we'll see how this goes. It's something very interesting, I think, because as well, I believe that, uh, first of all, haven't been a big friend anymore of Angela Merkel in recent, in many recent years, but uh, uh, Trump Kambauer was definitely not someone with any sort of charisma to lead the party moving ahead into the election. So that's going to adjust potentially also the movements. The euro is uh, moving lower, not because of this situation right now, but uh, I assume that the euro has further room to follow the market lower. Exactly what we said, resistance area market starts falling. We have now left the support area, market falls even lower. Remember, as well, we talked about euro pound. A weakening pound is now meeting a weakening euro, and all that combined might mean here interesting times ahead for euro pound to a currency pair and as well interesting times ahead for our euro dollar interest at currency pair, which seemingly is falling lower and as well giving way for lower lows. We would now close by uh, lead towards, uh, towards an initial target if you would have sold it here, 109.40, 109 slight supports to be expected here, weekly support area as well here at around the 109, 108.90. So just, uh, just shy of the 109 area, we find some support for now, but the market potentially has the room here to uh, move lower and all that combined then would potentially lead towards a move towards the 107.50 area. Working on an entry level here, I'm working on when to uh, when to sell the market. I'm also looking forward to sell it lower. One area, of course, and that's the one right now we could have here, is the support if the 109 area should break. Then we have, of course, clear entry towards a downside momentum. Problem I'm facing here right now, where to put the stop loss? The market could at any time retrace back all the way to the 109.90 area, which means we would need to put the stop loss above the high, which on the other hand, of course, makes us having some issues. Why that? Because if we're having a stop loss too far away, we have a, a, a very small rewards to risk ratio. And in this case, it's just one to one. So not a very sweet deal. If we're looking at the technical and of course, stop loss point of view, trading situation, 205, look at the central number, 205 pips of stop loss, and we have just 160 pips of profit. Nothing really where we would be saying, uh, well, that's just a, it's a handsome trade, it's a sweet deal here. So hence, uh, waiting a bit for a better entry potentially, should the market retrace slightly higher, what I would expect, the market is pretty much trading in a broad range, right? Any trade always up, down, swings here, pretty broad. It's not really moving directionally into one direction, usually quite often comes back and hence I would say, let's wait a bit here. If the market should retrace, then we have a very nice entry. So a look again, we have a very nice entry. This area, for example, offers us a stop loss of 115 pips and a take profit of 260 pips. Just by waiting a bit, we can kind of make more money compared to the risk taken. And that's as well something we might like further. So politically, we've talked about what's going on. We have some conversations, we have some talks, of course, today. We have a GDP from Great Britain. We have Mark Carney, who will later in the day be in front of the, or will talk in front of the, or speak in front of the parliament in Great Britain. Then we have, we have Jerome Powell talking in the US, doing the same story in front of Congress. We have numbers coming out, and of course, market moving events here. As, as just said, uh, another currency pair here, dollar yen could move higher. That's of course uh, driven fundamentally right now by the risk on factor. The market previously went lower. Right now we could see the market potentially moving higher as we can see the stock markets moving up and sharp. To answer your question, I would rather look for a long entries potentially here than short entries of uh, what this trading pair is uh, 
uh, uh, concerns. On the other hand as well, we can see, and that's the euro, the euro yen is moving lower. Why? The yen itself has not really a big wish at the moment to, to change direction, which of course would make it interesting or which makes it interesting. As we can see, gold market is rising. Gold market is still a strong, steady rising. The euro weakening, which is uh, the driving force behind this pair, euro weaker, yen also weaker in a way or not really much stronger, but uh, still euro yen going slightly lower. Following in this case, of course, uh, what, uh, what the euro dollar is doing. You can see euro dollar weekly moving lower. Oops. Uh, and uh, euro yen weekly also moving lower. On the other hand, dollar yen moving slightly higher. Why? Simply because the US dollar is the driving force in this currency pair and the euro is the driving force in this currency pair. So still our trade pretty much underway here. Euro yen lower, I think, could, uh, could, could survive easy or so likely to survive here. The stop loss being quite far away here. Also meaning as well in this case, the US dollar as well strength might stay in the markets, but the risk off might come back to life anyhow soon. And that's exactly what I said. Gold moving higher potentially. Stock markets new high. Gold US should have been trading a lower here, I would say, if uh, the risk environment is uh, kind of really uh, visible, which is not the case. I said uh, the gold market here likely driving higher and the uh, risk off might come back here anytime soon. Guys, bit of a longer session here today. I hope you had some fun in the markets and you still have some fun as well. Uh, thanks for everyone uh, tuning in. Mitch also here. Mitch, we'll meet up uh, for a drink hopefully anytime soon in uh, London towards the end of the week. And uh, of course, the same offer anyone else here of our BD Swiss clients. Uh, as well, we have some guys here from the headquarters in uh, Cyprus. Psst, don't listen. I'll do that after work, of course. Was rather a joke. But if anyone wants to have a drink in London on uh, Thursday, not potentially, but Friday or Saturday. Let me know. I'm uh, uh, close by the Wimbledon area. If any drink, then of course, uh, guys, come over. And uh, thanks for tuning in, of course. George, thanks, Frank. Good session. Hope uh, everyone will be all right uh, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Guys, have a good day. Bye bye.